Hi everyone, welcome to Talanta 50 day online 2023 special crash course series. Today is day 24th and today we are, dis we are going to discuss uh, some 14-15 uh, very important MCQs of the inorganic chapters from class 12 D and F block elements. So on day 23rd we have done some short of 15 or 14 questions and today we are <coughs> going to discuss another 13, 14 questions uh, among these two videos. Hope you will um, get a good momentum for the upcoming need in this particular chapter D and F block elements. So here we go. The first question is four successive members of the first row transition elements are listed below with their atomic numbers. Which one of them is expected to have the highest third ionization enthalpy? So option a is vanadium whose atomic number is 23 then chromium then iron then manganese this is a comparably easy question if you can write down the electronic configuration then you can easily find out the uh, you know highest third ionization enthalpy because you have to just apply the <coughs> hohn's rule of stability of half field and full field orbital so here manganese will be the answer if we consider the electronic configuration of manganese it is uh, outermost is uh, 4s2 and uh, is a 3d5 so third ionization potential means you know from 3d5 to 3d4 this is highly stable as it is half filled this is unstable so stable to unstable it has very lesser tendency to be converted so for these conversion from 3d5 to 3d4 which is involved during the third ionization enthalpy this electronic transfer is involved during the third ionization enthalpy consideration of manganese and uh, here it is energetically very less favorable so very high energy is needed uh, to con uh, to you know conduct the process so third ionization enthalpy of manganese will be the highest in that note We'll move to question 2. Fluorine is formed by reacting K2MnF6 with. This is a very common reaction is mentioned in NCRT as well. Uh, it basically K2MnF6. It reacts with 2SBF5 to produce 2KSBF6 plus MnF3 plus half fluorine so sbf5 is the answer option a is the correct option next question three brass is an alloy of this is very very common question it's a you know alloy of zinc and copper so option b is the correct answer we'll move to question four morn's process is used for it's, it's basically used for you know purification of a metal and that is also you know mentioned in the ncrt uh, chapter of metallurgy so you know it's a nickel pure nickel is formed by morn's process ni is the answer uh, what happens over here in the morn's process ni which reacts with uh, 4 co at 60 to 80 degrees celsius to produce NiCO whole 4 then it is further heated at 180 degrees Celsius to produce Ni this is pure so this is the process in a nutshell then next we'll move to question 5 which one of the following compounds is not colored so option A is Na2CuCl4 and sorry Na2CuCl4 yeah Option B is Na2CdCl4, next K4 FeCN6, next K3 FeCN6. It's basically, you know, a uh, question, it is uh, the coloration is related with DD electronic transition. So we have to consider uh, whether the electronic configuration is D0 or D10 for the central atom, uh, then it will be colorless. And if it is the electronic configuration from D1 to D9, it will be colored. So in Na2CuCl4, uh, copper is in plus 2 oxidation state. Copper plus 2 means this is a 3D9 system, right? So 
3D9 system means it will be colored Na2CdCl4. Uh, it is cadmium is in plus two state. Uh, zinc, cadmium, mercury. So cadmium is 4D10. So as it is 4D10, no DD electronic transition is possible. So this is colorless Na2CdCl4. Cadmium belongs to the group of zinc zinc cadmium and then marker is there next we'll move to question six which is mild oxidizing agent uh, ag2o kmno4 kmno is a very strong oxidizing agent k2cr2 because is a manganese is in plus seven oxidation state k2cr207 chromium is in plus six is a very strong oxidizing agent. chlorine is also very strong but ag2o is moderately you know strong oxidizing agent uh, generally uh, oxidation higher the oxidation number of the metal atom higher will be the oxidizing power in that note here ag is also the oxidation state of ag is plus one so in that note it is mild oxidizing as well so 6a is the correct answer we'll move to question seven which one of the following organizations iron and steel plant was built to use charcoal as a source of power to start with but later switch to over to hydroelectricity. First option is the Tata Iron and Steel Company. Option B is the Indian Iron and Steel Company, Mysore Iron and Steel Limited. Option C and option D is Hindustan Steel Limited. You know, when we are we are talking about, we are thinking about industrialization industry uh, in India, the obvious name which comes in our mind at first, that is the group, Tata Group. So here the answer is also the same, the Tata Iron and Steel Company. So option A is the correct answer. What a wonderful man he is. Next question, eight. The taste of ozone, O3, can be done by, the first option is silver then mercury then oram then copper this is a specific test is referred as trailing of mercury uh 2hg plus o3 produces 8g2o plus o2 when 8g2o is produced it is uh, stuck inside the you know test tube uh wall uh, and uh, the you know uh, the free flow of mercury is hindered so that's uh, uh, in the by this process we can identify mercury uh, <clears throat> and ozone as well so mercury is the answer next question nine point out the incorrect reaction 2mno2 plus 4koh plus o2 4k2 mno4 plus 2h2 this is correct next mno4 minus plus 8h plus plus 5 fe2 plus 5 fe3 plus plus mn2 plus plus 4h2 this is incorrect next question 10 in the dichromate dianion option a says four chromium oxygen bonds are equivalent option b says six chromium oxygen bonds are equivalent option c all chromium oxygen bonds are equivalent all chromium oxygen bonds are non-equivalent according to option d so this is a very common question once more this is option b uh, cr2 o7 2 minus dichromate dianion you just draw the structure and you can easily find it out next we'll move to question 11 when kmno4 acts as an oxidizing agent and ultimately forms mno4 2 minus mn2 o3 and mn2 plus the number of electrons transferred in each case respectively are it's a uh, four uh three one five one five three seven one three four this is very easy you just it will one three four five will be the answer you just uh see here the oxidation state is plus three when it is uh trans say for example when it is transformed uh, you know mn2 plus so basically uh plus seven to plus two so five electrons are transferred over there in this way you can easily calculate option c is the answer next we'll move to question 12 how many ions are produced from conh3 whole 6 cl3 in solution so what it will uh, this is the counter ion cl3 so this will produce three cl minus and uh, the cation will be this one this uh, conh3 whole six three plus so one cation and three anions will be formed so 
टोटल फोर आयंस विल बी जेनरेटेड ऑप्शन बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर विल मूव टू क्वेश्चन थर्टीन इन सॉलिड सी यू एस ओ फोर डॉट फाइव एच टू ओ कॉपर इज कोऑर्डिनेट टू नंबर ऑफ वाटर मॉलिक्यूल्स इक्वल टू इट्स फोर बेसिकली सी यू एच टू ओ होल फोर एच टू ओ दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर एंड वन मोर वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन दीज वाटर इज वेरी स्ट्रांगली बॉन्डेड एट हियर एक्सटेंसिव हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड इज फॉर्म सो वेन हीटेड द लास्ट मॉलिक्यूल which will be liberated the last molecule which will be liberated from cuso4.5h2 this is the this one so four are in the coordination sphere and one is outside the sphere and this water is extensively hydrogen bonded and that's why this is very strongly held up and to remove uh, this water you have to heat cuso4.5h2 in very high temperature we'll move to question 14 consider a titration of potassium dichromate solution with acidified fe2 plus salt solution using diphenyl amine as indicator the number of moles of fe2 ion required per mole of dichromate ion is so the equation this is another ncert very important equation 6 fe2 plus reacts with cr2o7 2 minus plus 14 H plus to produce six Fe three plus plus two Cr three plus along with seven moles of water. So, the number of moles of Fe two ion required per mole of dichromate. So, six moles from one mole, six moles are required. So, option D is the correct answer. so diphenyl amine uh, this is also a very important information you can note it down diphenyl amine is an example of redox indicator which is used in oxidation reduction titrations uh, like you know phenolphthalein or methyl orange is acid base uh, indicator but diphenyl amine another one is very common uh, redox indicator is 110 phenantholine you just uh, you know note these two names diphenyl amine and 110 phenantholine these are examples of redox indicators which are used during redox titration we'll move to question 15 in chromate ore the oxidation number of iron and chromium are respectively to chromate in chromite ore oh, sorry sorry in chromite ore the oxidation number of iron and chromium are respectively so this is plus 2 and plus 3 option d is the correct answer next move to question 16 which one of the following statements is incorrect when h2s is passed through acidified k2cr2o7 solution what happens when this is very important reaction this is also mentioned in ncert k2cr2o7 reacts with 4 moles of sulfuric acid plus 3 h2s to produce k2so4 plus cr2so4 whole 3 plus 7 h2o plus 3 s so first option what is telling a pale yellow precipitate of sulfur is formed yes this correct uh next option b is the solution turns colorless no it is green colored salt and it's a pale yellow not not at all colorless so option b is incorrect hydrogen sulfide is oxidized of course hydrogen sulfide from minus 2 sulfur to zero it is coming so it is oxidized that is also correct and potassium dichromate undergoes reduction of course potassium dichromate is undergoing reduction so everything is correct except the option b next question 17 diamagnetic lanthanide ions among the followings are 
ALU3 plus YB2 plus, uh, yes, this one. So try to remember this uh, sort of factual uh, things. You try to remember the diamagnetic lanthanoids in which oxidation state they are diamagnetic and all those things. Try to remember these are very too important, very common, uh, you know, lanthanoids uh, which are diamagnetic in nature. And uh, it had been asked in the previous year questions in NEAT and JMN as well. Next, we'll move to question 18. Uh, this is the last question of this slot. Find the incorrect statement with reference to interstitial compounds. Option A, they are chemically in inert. Yeah, that is correct. Next, they are non-stoichiometric and neither typically ionic nor covalent. That is correct. Next, they have low melting points than that of parent metal. No, they have high melting point, higher than that of the pure metals. So, uh, because the metal, non-metal bonds are stronger than metal-metal bonds in pure state. Here, you know, uh, in, in industrial compound, metal-non-metal -metal bonds are formed. Metal-non-metal -metal bonds are stronger due to, you know, generation of sort of polarity. Uh, so, than metal-metal bond. So, that's why they have higher melting points than that of parent metal. So option C is incorrect. That's all for today. Hope you have uh, got 18 uh, very good information of NCRT regarding this DNA block, uh, you know, chapter. So the people who are new in to our channel today, don't forget to subscribe our channel to get such sort of wonderful videos of his chemistry, maths, biology of class 12 for JE need and the board exams as well and uh, you know as uh, I'm, I'm sure that you have been benefited from the video so please don't uh, you know uh, forget to press the like button and share the videos uh, with your friends thank you for watching thanks for sharing good words about talanta thanks for sharing talanta's video